dynamic, articulate, perceptive, courageous, outspoken. Just a few of the adjectives that so inadequately describe Malcolm X. Few singular personalities have emerged on the national and international scene to so excite and stimulate interest in the plight of 22 million Afro-Americans in the USA. Controversial? Without a doubt. Not only speaking out the agonies of 22 million members of the black masses, but effectively voicing the guarded views and opinions of many of his detractors in the Negro elites. Indeed, Malcolm X Speaks Again is particularly timely as the spirit and status of this great human, even after physical death, continues to live and grow. We are privileged to again hear the voice of Minister Malcolm X. Thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome the opportunity to come into your home. I would like to know what your position is on nonviolence. Well, nonviolence is one of the things that has disarmed the so-called Negro here in America. And any Negro leader who teaches our people to be nonviolent in the face of the violence that we've been uh, experiencing for the past 400 years is actually doing our people a disservice. In fact, it's a crime. It's a crime for any Negro leader to teach our people uh, not to do something to protect ourselves, especially in the face of the violence that is inflicted upon us by the white people here in America. And whenever you teach a man to turn the other cheek or to be nonviolent, what you're actually doing is disarming the victim of white uh, brutality. You're robbing him of his right to defend himself. In fact, the only time it's intelligent to be nonviolent is when you're dealing with someone else who's nonviolent. I'm nonviolent with those who are nonviolent with me. This is intelligent. But just as you see other people doing whatever is necessary to protect themselves, it's time today for the 22 million Afro-Americans to feel free to do whatever is necessary to, to protect ourselves. You take for an example, in the Constitution, it gives uh, a person the right to have a rifle or a shotgun. And in areas uh, in this country where the government has proven itself either unwilling or unable to defend the black people, it is time for the black man to stand up and start defending himself. Not to go out and initiate acts of aggression against uh, whites or initiate acts of aggression against anyone. But in areas where we see that the government will not protect us or defend us or find those who have brutalized us and made us the victims for the past 400 years, then it is time for us to do whatever is necessary to defend ourselves. And it should be emphasized that by this, I don't mean that we should go out and look for trouble or start trouble or initiate acts of aggression. But we should feel that we're within our human rights, our civil rights, and within the rights of intelligence to do whatever is necessary when we are attacked to defend ourselves. In fact, the best thing to teach our, our